enough room on the racetrack. He'll use what's off the racetrack, and he gets it done. He's still chasing Emerson, but look how much he lost. Willie T turns the dirt up onto Raul Bozell. And, both, and Villeneuve kicked the rear end all the way off the course on that corner as well. Now back to the pit straight. They climb the hill once again, pass the flag. Tracy still leading, 69 laps complete. Richie Simon wills on his driver for the last time. Raul Bozell currently running at fifth. But in a hiccup, he could be second. Jan Vikas? Well, Derek, the reason he is in the position, of course, is because of the miscue in the pits by the other two runners of Villeneuve and Fabi. But we just checked with Chuck Matthews, and they said they made a timed pit stop, only put in just enough fuel, so that car might be slightly lighter. Well, let's hope that they fit those calculations perfectly. Several times this year, not necessarily by Dick Simon and his team, but we have seen miscalculations in just how much fuel to get in on a time stop. But we will keep an eye on Bosell. If he's lighter, he should be faster. Teo Fabi just behind. Willie T, who is embroiled in a battle with Dobson, running in 13th place. He needs to move over, but not lose too much time, or else he will be under attack again from Dobson. Tracy, 6.3 seconds ahead of Al Enzer Jr. Tracy, Jr., Fittipaldi, the top three, the Penske team. Look at the work Fabi now has to do. That indiscretion in the pit lane suddenly negates all Fabi's great work assignments. Team again wills on Bozell. So we keep track of this battle for fifth. Fabi and Bozell. There are the two Penske cars as we come forward. Al Unser Jr. and Emerson Fittipaldi and Jacques Villeneuve. Oh, this is good stuff here. Good stuff. Two Penske's, one Reynard, all equal in speed. Dominic Dobson not in the fight, running 12th. Just ahead of them, hasn't moved out of the way. Al Jr. tried to force a way past Willie T. Eventually got it done, but it is risky when you go offline here. 14 laps left in the season as Boisell around Fabi, and they both get around Willie T. Ribs. 14 laps left in the season now, and still some tremendous battles here in the top 10. 55 miles an hour is the speed down through here. Then it gets faster. 115 miles an hour right here. Downhill run, 160. Down to the hairpin. 50 miles an hour. Looks slower, but it's 50 miles an hour according to the telemetry readings. Here's the fastest straight here, 172 miles an hour in qualifying. But both of the Penske's been very careful in passing. Once again, Vilnep moves way to the outside, tiptoes and then brings it back in, trying to dial inside of Emerson Fittipaldi. He's alongside Fittipaldi now. Oh, and he's past him. And Bozell now looking for room to get around Fittipaldi. There's Unser Jr. still second as he's able to ease away. But now Villeneuve very much in pursuit. Bozell attacking at Fittipaldi. Bozell comes to the inside. He's around. Boy, it looks like they touched. They didn't. They continue. Bobby now closing. Fittipaldi may be in trouble. Road racing at its best. Villeneuve showing sheer bravery to pull that move up. Emerson gives him enough room. And then Bozell went for bust down the inside and just about stayed on the racetrack. And Emerson again gave him just enough room. 1987, Bobby Rahal started in third here and went on to win it. That's the only time in 11 IndyCar races at this track that the winner has not come off of the front row. The leader is currently Paul Tracy, who started on the pole. So Villeneuve is on the podium right now. And Al Jr. is only 15 car lengths up the road. Now Villeneuve has to be careful. Make sure youth and exuberance does not get the better of him in this chase of Al Jr. Remember how careful Al was when he came up to make this pass. In fact, he tiptoed through all the traffic. This is Villeneuve as he made the pass on the last lap. Very brave. This is difficult. This is where Michael crashed earlier. Right here, forces the issue, sticks the rear wheels on the dirt, and Emerson has no option but to let him through. Bravery made that pass. Emerson very wisely gave him an opening there. Let's go to Jan Vikas. 
Well, speaking of Jacques Villeneuve, he has just got a quick radio communication. Barry Green told him, hey, we think your tires are better than Tracy's and Emmo's. Go after them. All right. So in the closing laps of the season, the release to Jacques Villeneuve. Go after him. Motivate your driver. That's what Barry Green is doing. And he is very good at it. Paul Tracy now could be in a little trouble. We'll be back. Back at the Toyota Grand Prix of Monterey, featuring the Bank of America 300. Allenser Jr. off the edge of the racetrack. We've had a couple changes here. Allenser Jr. was running in second, now sits against the wall. Shelly Unser reacts to it. Also, you saw just as we were going to break, Raul Boisel was able to move forward into third place, so this will take him forward into second place as Allenser Jr.'s day is done. And here's how that developed. Here was Raul as he maneuvered to the inside. That was when he got the position. the position. And then climbing the hill was able to move on Villeneuve and pick up third place. So Al Jr.'s record, or the potential for the record and for the Penske team, is now history. Let's go to the pits, Gary Gerald. Got a quick word with Richard Buck. He's congratulating his crew, telling them they did a great job. They believe that it was some type of a failure or a problem relating to the transmission that has parked the 1994 champion just short of completing another race. Roger Penske with his hopes pinned on Paul Tracy to take his 12th and record 12th win of the year. And Shelly Unser congratulates our book. What a combination. Our book has been but Bozell is now second, and that's why Richie Simon Dixon is willing on his driver. He believes he may possibly have the measure of Paul Tracy. I'd be surprised. Nine laps to go in the seat. Could Raul Boisel be chasing Paul Tracy for his first IndyCar win and Dick Simon's first? He's been close before. Understand that picture of Alonso Jr. That car was backwards on the racetrack, back into the wall. So something serious happened either in the driver compartment or in the mechanical compartment to turn him around. There's first. Now we wait for Bozell in second. And it's going to be a wait. 19 seconds. At last timing as they cross the start-finish line on the EDS scoring before we will see the emergence of the second-place car. There he is. Does he have enough time? No. What he has to work for is a potential mechanical disadvantage in the Paul Tracy car. Let's go to Jan Vikas. Well, this Dick Simon pit is absolutely going crazy. They're right now rooting their driver on, and Dick was just yelling. He says, Jan, he says, make sure you tell everybody that he has not asked for one change this entire race. And the Goodyear people have told Dick Simon that they feel his tires look better than any drivers out there. So maybe he does have the speed to go for the lead. Well, all of his time in endurance sports cars, he certainly knows how to conserve tires. You indicated that Alan Jr. probably had a lock somewhere. When they indicate transmission, perhaps a gearbox lock spun him around and put him backwards up against the brush with I'm the wall. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Good pictures of Dick Simon, who prides himself on being the engineer that sets up this car for Alan Jr. There's the family, Diane and Dick, their last time together with the Raul Bozell. They have been very successful, but the promise to be fulfilled, that is having a win, may come up one place short again. But if they are to put themselves in a winning position, it will most likely have to be as a result of a mistake being made by Paul Tracy. He currently leads. We'll be back. Back on a hot day before a great crowd in Laguna Seca Raceway. Everybody spread out with their blankets up on the hill. You can see a good part of this racetrack. And watching a wonderful fight and a tremendous domination at the same time. Paul Tracy is 20 seconds ahead of Raul Boisel, who has cut and carved his way up through the field to be currently running in seventh. And now, with six laps to go, Mario Andretti completing the last laps of his career, being chased by Adrian Fernandez in a battle for seventh. Last race, age 54, and Mario is still very, very racy. And Robbie Gordon takes a quick loop, lights the tires, and gets going again. Another 25 laps of rubber laid on the exit. Gordon has been around quite a few times. That clutch in that car must be very strong, and that transmission very well built by Winston Bush. Robbie Gordon runs in 14th place now. Here's how he got into trouble. The right side of the screen, under power, turn one, loops it. Gordon has a habit <laughs> of dropping the clutch when he knows he's in the spin and selecting the gear as soon as possible. 
and does a dragster style for him. <laughs> he is spectacular. Robbie Gordon. Those drive shots are lifed out right now for the rest of this event. If Raul and Jacques finish in their current positions, they both pass Nigel Mansell, Mansell in points this year. Jacques Villeneuve will go to six. Raul will go to seventh. Nigel will be eighth in the PPG points for the season. On board with Robbie Gordon now. Get an idea of what it looks like when you're driving in that kind of mess. And just listen. See what he did when he was in the spin and all was lost. Dropped the clutch. Dropped it again. Broke the rear wheels loose and then just squealed the thing all the way till he got it straight. As he crosses the line, four laps to go for Paul Tracy. Four laps away from a record for the Penske Racing Team. Four laps away from the end of Mario's career. There's the battle for second place. You see the interval now, it is substantial. And in fact, it looks like Villeneuve is closing in. Oh, Bozell cannot let up here. We have a Penske, Richie Simon again. If he could get out and give him a push, he would. But we have a Penske. A Lola and a Rainer. This is the way it should be. Three different manufacturers fighting for the top three positions. Mario's Mario. in trouble. He slows down. It looks like the engine has let go and Mario's career might come to an end prematurely as he heads for the pits, streaming some vapor and some moisture from the exhaust pipes at the rear of the car. Mario Andretti, 407 IndyCar races. And it ends like this. Decades of racing. Mario breathes deeply, hesitates to climb out of the car. Perhaps a hope that there is something there that will restart that engine. At least bring him under the checker. There was a lot of blue smoke, and that's usually an ominous sign. And there's not too much of a hurry there to get things fixed. So that is what looks like a terminal problem for Mario. Battle for fourth, Emerson Fittipaldi trying to hold off a very racy Teo Fabi. So at the front of the field, it's Paul Tracy, Raul Boisel 20 seconds back, Jacques Villeneuve, Emerson Fittipaldi, Teo Fabi, and Emerson's, and Mario Andretti's day is over. Dear car owners, not everyone knows a car's suspension consists of the shocks, struts, steering, and alignment. Another thing not everyone knows, Midas is a suspension expert. So if your car pulls, shimmies, or bounces, come to Midas for a thorough inspection and a guarantee on shocks and struts for as long as you own your car. That's the Midas way. Sports Riders. Ever wonder how they pick football's national champion? It's a highly scientific process. <laughs> it's time to settle it on the field.